The following program does not necessarily reflect the views, opinions, or policies of the City of Oceanside, its elected officials, KOCT, its board of directors, or staff. You're watching KOCT, the Oceanside Channel. This program brought to you by the caring hands of Tri-City Medical Center. Welcome to the Voice of Oceanside. The topic today is passion for pets. You may have seen our other segment on this topic, and if not, watch for it. It'll be coming up. Uh, with us today is Dorothy McCorkle, who for 30 years has had an extreme passion for pets, and we're addressing all issues that have to do with pets. Dorothy, welcome to the Voice of Oceanside. Thank you very much, John. I'm happy to be here. And I want to uh, give a, a short capsule version of what we talk about on our other uh, episode mm -hmm. of The Voice. We talked about the, the huge pet overpopulation that exists. We talked about spaying and neutering options. And we talked about resources that are available to do that and animal shelters. Uh, in this show, we want to address community issues and some legal issues, the issue of adoption, and what it is to be a responsible pet owner. Let's start with the community issues. Uh, pet overpopulation has an impact even on those of us who don't have pets. Talk to us about that. Yes, that's very true. Uh, you can walk down the street and you could be attacked by a dog and bitten by a dog. That's part of pet overpopulation because someone has let that dog out or they, uh, the dog is out all the time and the dog isn't fixed, the dog is aggressive, the dog hasn't been trained, and so there is the possibility of a safety issue there. And the city has to pay animal control contracts in order to capture that dog or to investigate a cruelty case, uh, investigate dog fighting. So these are city, this is city, taxes that pay for this and uh, the the fact that they have a contract to supply animal control officer, officers is an issue it's an impact on the city and it's also an impact on us as as far as um, our our taxes are concerned it impacts everything and one of the things that um, is good about the fact that people in the community are getting involved. They hear on television when, they, um, when Oceanside City Council has a meeting about once a month, the San Diego Humane Society will bring in an adoptable animal uh, and show that animal and tell about that animal. Hopefully, that animal will be adopted. And there are seven other animals waiting behind that. So hopefully it brings seven people into the shelter, but it is a community issue. Um, the, uh, not just the cost of the city, but the impact on people who have uh, barking dogs next door to you, uh, because the dogs are lonely all day and no one takes care of them and they're, they're out there or they're, they're undernourished. These are animal control issues again. And so the the community has to become more involved uh, with actions that support reducing the pet population and also uh, making sure that people are responsible pet owners. Uh, I'd like to mention two things that are happening that uh, are happening in Oceanside. We have uh, a group called Love on a Leash that's a therapy dog group and those people go into um, hospitals, they go into nursing homes, they go into schools, and they bring the trained therapy dogs that are wonderful dogs in with them. And one of the programs is a library program in Oceanside, where the public library once a month has a, a um, program called Pause to Read. And this is for children to learn about the animals that may be sensitive to animals, they may be afraid of animals, they may be young and have no experience with, with animals. And uh, they read to the, to the dogs. 
and it's it's pretty exciting and it's pretty noisy but sometime you should visit the library and attend a pause to read session with the therapy dogs it's very enlightening uh, also there is a group called kennel comforters they're on the website and kennel comforters was started about maybe six years ago by a woman who liked to sew and she thought well maybe i could help the animals in the shelter by making pet beds for them and this has become uh, a so like a when they had uh, quilts and all the ladies brought in came in and made the quilts. Well, now they make dog beds and they have uh, they have sewing machines, portable sewing machines, and they come down to the Department of Animal Services and they make these wonderful dog bed uh, dog beds and cat beds and cat curtains. She also has cat curtains, and this is. Uh, this is just some of the things that the animals have done. And I think the point is that uh, the majority of the public doesn't know what goes on in the shelters. And there are good things that go on in the shelters. And so uh, people should visit the shelters. First of all, make sure you know where your shelter is because there may come a time when you have an emergency, you need to take contact that shelter right away. That should be on your, on your cell phone. And, um, I know for sure because I'm always finding a dog somewhere or a cat somewhere and so uh, you need to be able to contact the, the shelter that serves your area. Another program that is very interesting is at Rancho Costa Humane Society and this is, this is an ongoing program whereby uh, victims of domestic violence often don't want to uh, leave their homes. They will remain violated simply because they have a, a pet there and maybe that pet has already been abused as well but they uh, they need a place to put the pet and um, so for those people who want to use the program at Rancho Costa Humane Society, Rancho Costa Humane Society will house that animal and they call it their safe house program while the uh, um, person is looking for another home and having being able to move out that allows the people to move out of a abusive of an abusive home um, well, that's they, a good program because most of the safe houses don't have accommodation for pets no, that no. the person goes to yes mm -hmm. and um, I think we all know from experience that there are people who would put themselves at risk Right. rather than leave a pet, particularly in that situation, because yes. the pet may be who they're closest to. That, that Definitely, that's very important. Um, there was a group called FOCUS, which was in existence for a long time, Friends of the County Animal Shelter. Uh, they have merged with the Rancho Costa Humane Society, and now they're a Rancho Costa Humane Society program. And that... Uh, that um, program is offering spay and neuter services for free to rescue organizations. So someone that has already has a rescue group and if the animal hasn't been fixed yet, uh, they can go to Rancho Costa Humane and get the animal fixed. So that's another program that um, is very important. Let's talk about some of the legal issues, uh, some of the laws that apply. Now, we, we mentioned in our other show about the fact that pets that come out of shelters are spayed or neutered, and that was taken care of years ago. What are some of the other relevant laws that people should know about? Uh, as far as dogs are concerned, there is a leash law. Uh, your dog is to be contained, either on a leash or in a house or in a yard or whatever. Dogs are not supposed to be loose. In the back of a pickup truck, you have to tie your dog down. That's the law. And um, the other law, of course, is, is that you, the cruelty laws, which you cannot, you cannot uh, hurt an animal. You need to give the animal food, water, shelter, and also you need to um, um, <clears throat> recognize that that, that that animal has needs. Uh, you can't leave it to starve uh, out in the backyard and you put it on a chain and that's pretty much abusive but that's not illegal. The um, licensing, uh, dogs are supposed to be licensed 
and only about 25% of them are because we don't have the money to monitor the dogs. But if your dog is picked up by the shelter you pr and it's unlicensed, you probably w would have to pay uh, um, a license fee in order to redeem the animal. The other thing is uh, the in um, at Camp Pendleton, if you are a new Marine coming into Camp Pendleton and you are bringing one of the bully dogs with you, then uh, you may not be able to ha keep that dog on the base. Bully dogs are pit bulls, uh, Rottweilers, Dobermans, Chows, and uh, while they can make perfect pets, uh, they, the uh, base has say so as to whether you can bring that on. There is a grandfather's clause that if you are already stationed and, and living at the base, you can have a dog that's been with you prior. Now, while we're on this topic, and I realize that it, I don't, at least I don't think it's a law, although I think it's a regulation on Camp Pendleton, let's address the microchip issue right oh, now. Oh, it's very, very important to microchip your, your animals and to have them I, be identified with a leash or a collar, especially, especially for dogs. Um, now, the other end of the spectrum is that cats, because they're not required to be leashed, uh, cats don't have to have a, uh, um, anything. They're just out there. They don't have to have anything, but they can be microchipped as well. And also, the, um, the, uh, uh, the dog has to, uh, as I said, be contained. It's difficult to contain a cat, and it may be difficult to contain a dog in some regard But also. the microchip is not a law. No, it's uh, not a law. But if you are adopting from a, shel a shelter, it will, it's very likely that the animal will be microchipped as well as spayed and neutered. Is there a minimum age on, on microchipping, the, the actual process of putting it in? No, it's very safe. It's just a tiny little chip that uh, goes into the back of the animal's neck and it's registered in a registry. Do you, have, do you have any feel for what percentage of, of uh, pets out there have the microchip? It would, would depend on how old the pet is because microchipping has come a long way in the last 10 or 12 years, maybe 15 years. We didn't, 15 years ago, we probably didn't, weren't microchipping very many animals. But no, I don't know how many would be would uh, be. Uh, on the other hand, it's never too late to do it, right? No. So you can do it at, <laughs> at any time. It's never too late to spay, yeah. neuter, and put identification on your cat. Put a, if it's outside, put a collar and a bell on it so it won't attack the birds. <laughs> what, what's the primary resource for the chip? Is it a veterinarian or is it one of these community services that we're talking about? Either one. Either one is okay. You can go to any vet, and they probably have microchipping capabilities, and uh, it might be less if, if you're um, if you're adopting if you're adopting a uh, pet, for example, from SNAP, Spay Neuter Action Project, then the um, the microchipping is also done, just like at the shelters. Well, it's actually it's time for our first break. When we come back, we'll move into adopting and responsible pet ownership. Okay. So stay with us. We'll be back in about two minutes. I'm Joan Lacey, and I started Kennel Comforters. We're a group of volunteers. We're a nonprofit organization in San Diego County. Our website is kennelcomforters.com, and we sew and distribute uh, beds to all the shelters in San Diego County. 14 shelters, we've made over 10,000 beds, but the shelters sometimes have as many as 30,000 animals a year. Shelters don't have money for beds. They don't have that kind of funding. They barely have enough money for food and medicine and to pay their staff, and so we're happy to fill a niche that uh, a warm bed makes a pet uh, calmer and happier and makes a better adopted pet. Shelter dogs are the most loving, appreciative dogs that you'll ever find. This is the kind of love that you can bring home from your local shelter. Animal shelters have a lot of different kinds of cats. It's up to you what kind of cat you want to get at the animal shelter. Every pet comes with a unique set of hopes and dreams. And one wish shared by every new pet owner. 
a happy, healthy life together. Make that wish a reality with early and regular visits to your veterinarian. Vaccinations help protect your puppy or kitten from dangerous diseases. And regular exams help diagnose, treat, and prevent health problems before they become serious. Your veterinarian can also answer questions and offer helpful advice on training your new pet. See that your new pet grows up healthy and happy. Call your veterinarian today. This message is brought to you by the American Veterinary Medical Association and your local veterinarians. Welcome back to the Voice of Oceanside. We have a passion for pets in this segment. Uh, Dorothy, if you really have a passion for pets, adoption is something that you've probably been waiting to hear about, and I'm sure you're interested in, in getting to that. So let's Absol talk about that. Absolutely. Um, the adoption is wonderful, and you have to judge your own situation in your own home. What kind of animal do you want? What kind of what kind of a situation is it in the home? If are are there children present? How old are the children, or how young? Uh, your 17-year-old that wants to get his uh, get a dog may not be the right person because they might be in college in three years and guess who gets the dog then? To, the parents have to take care of it. Uh, so you have to evaluate your own situation and there are all kinds of uh, adoption venues. Not, not only the shelters, but we want you to visit the shelter first. The saying is don't breed or buy while shelter pets die. And uh, visit the shelters. Go online, 1-800-SAVE-A-PET. Uh, uh, it also is, is uh, San Diego Pets com, uh, the uh, petfinders.com, that's a big, big uh, website. And don't go to uh, areas where, you're, where it's questionable, where someone is advertising a pet or dog that you have no history on. It should be, it should be an animal that's in a legitimate website and, or in a legitimate shelter, not something that someone down the street has found and said, well, would you like this animal? Don't, don't adopt that animal. Is that sort of a, ba is that a backyard breeder? It is, certainly is could be. It certainly could about. be because backyard breeders are responsible for X percentage of the dogs that wind in the shelters. And whether, whether, that's, whether it's an accidental birth or whether it's a planned birth or what, uh, that's not the best place because Again, it's simple arithmetic. There's one pet that comes from a backyard breeder into your home means another pet in a, in a shelter is likely to go because, to be put down because there's no room. There's, there's only one place. And um, If you decide that shelter is an option, uh, mm -hmm. should, and just I want to get like a, a mindset or even advice on this, mm -hmm. Um, should you expect to make one trip to one shelter and find the pet you want, or is it more of a shopping experience? A little bit of both, but there's bound to be a shelter that looks you, or a pet that looks you in the eye in that shelter, and you think you're in love with that pet right then. <laughs> so that happens quite often uh, with people, and unless they know a specific breed and they call the shelter all the time and they um, find out whether they have any animals in that breed. And I have a, I have a friend who wanted a, a uh, Rottweiler and she was searching all over the websites and in the shelters and the problem was that she couldn't find a Rottweiler that was under 50 pounds and her association <laughs> wouldn't let her have an animal that was any larger than that. So she finally gave up, and uh, she bought a smaller, got a smaller dog. <laughs> so put, putting the last two top, last two uh, topics together, you should really have this family discussion before you start looking at pets. Yes. Because if you don't, the first one that looks at you, that's it. Even if that's not the appropriate pet for that's your life right. circumstances. That's so right. mm -hmm. I'm, I'm guessing that there's probably checklists on websites on things to consider. Oh, absolutely. Uh, when you're deciding yes. what kind of pet mm -hmm. and what their characteristics absolutely. are. Absolutely. Um, and the, um, 
rabbits are also given a bad rep, as well as cat, too many cats, too many kittens, but rabbits are um, make wonderful pets. They can even be litter trained most to a litter box. Most people don't know that. But um, again, uh, getting a rabbit, if you have small children, probably not a good idea because um, they don't necessarily like to be cuddled that much. And but they look like they would. They look like they would. <coughs> and an, um, another thing, while we're talking about adoption and the fact that uh, you want to be a, a responsible pet owner, and there are a lot of reasons to um, have a pet. We teach children in our in our classrooms that um, in many classrooms to recognize the value of, of a small pet maybe in the classroom. Uh, we also know that uh, for seniors, it's we walk a dog. It's good for our health. Um, they um, it reduces the blood pressure and it, it uh, contributes a good thing for our immune system and. A happy home with a happy pet is what we'd like in our communities, definitely. And the um, when the children are taught, the likelihood that they are more humane to everyone, not just to animals, as they grow up, is is a proven fact. Now, interestingly, every single benefit you mentioned would be exactly the same whether you paid for a pet or adopted a pet. That's true. That's and definitely with the adopting true. a pet, you have the added benefit of you've become a solution to the yes, your, definitely, your, that step one in the solution to the problem. And uh, we have a, a um, revised and renovated dog park in Oceanside. Uh, they've enlarged it. They have separate uh, accommodations for small dogs and large dogs. And um, you just see all kinds of dogs there playing with each other, and they're wonderful. And uh, it's a happy place, and there's a lot of pleasure in owning a pet. It's a, it's a comfort to people when they're under stress. Uh, and they reciprocate with uh, love that is, has no conditions. So if you have an animal in your house and uh, you're sick, it's very likely that that animal knows it and that that animal is responding to you and caring about you. Um, and you, you also should know, in addition to where your, your uh, shelter is, know where your emergency vet is, because it's very likely that if your cat get, or dog or rabbit or whatever gets sick, uh, it's not going to be nine to five. <laughs> you ha it's going to be... It's going to be the overnight or the emergency vet that you have to go to. So know where that emer emergency vet is. You know, there's a third thing we can, it's appropriate to throw in now, even though we were going to talk about it a little bit later. You need to know where the shelter is for mm -hmm. obvious reasons. You need to know where the emergency vet is for obvious yes. reasons. Mm -hmm. You need to have a lost pet plan as well if you're a responsible pet owner. Absolutely. So Absolutely. tell us what, what that would be. Um, if you lose your pet, uh, you just can't find it. It's outdoors somewhere. Uh, the first thing that people do is put signs in the neighborhood, uh, and that's great. Don't put up a picture because as somebody's driving by, they can't see the picture. And the other thing is that there are resources within the community. You, first of all, you go to the shelter uh, and tell them that you've lost this animal because they may find it. And the uh, second thing is be sure that, the, um, that you check the neighborhood. Ask the postman, ask the children in the neighborhood. With cats, cats hide very easily because of their size. Um, go into people's garages next door to you. Uh, have them open the garage door. Cats always get trapped in garages and sheds and under wood piles, things like that. And um, so you're, you're talking to people that live in your community and letting them know that if they see your pet, you're interested. And children especially also seem to find pets easily. So I would uh, guess this is a situation where uh, a lot of rapid action. Is so important. start sooner rather than later. Absolutely. If you think Absolutely. the pet is lost, it mm -hmm. probably is. It probably is, yes. And, not, and don't guess, just go to your own shelter. 
to report that it's lost, but go to other shelters because a lost dog can travel 25 or 30 miles in one day and be in another county. So you need to go to the other shelters to post that that dog is lost. Now, the, any official organization like a shelter is going to check for the chip? Yes. As a first step, yes. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's your biggest, I, that's got to be the biggest preparation. Yes, but it either is. Either you've yes. done that or you have. And so. for cats and dogs both, you should have a collar on the dog or a harness on the dog that has an ID tag uh, as well because... Um, if, it, if you haven't microchipped it, it should at least have an identification um, by collar. So we, we've got about three minutes left mm -hmm. um, on responsible pet ownership. Uh, I, I'd, I'd like you to do a recap for us on that because we touched on the issues, mm -hmm. but l l let's emphasize that. Um, I would like to emphasize, uh, number one, um, good vet care with vaccines. There are a lot of issues where, uh, especially rabies, dogs are supposed to be um, vaccinated for rabies before they're four months old. That is a law. Uh, and cats, it's not um, mandated that cats be um, vaccinated for rabies, and yet they're the ones that are likely to be outside and, and get bit by a, a rabid animal. Uh, the other thing is that the um, the action that you talked about that 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 is important in lost dogs. But knowing your emergency vet, microchipping, uh, hug your pet, let your dog know that let your dog or your cat or your rabbit know that you really care about that animal. Um, and we we tend to postpone doing things that we should do. The first thing, of course, is spaying and neutering to, to control the overpopulation and uh, not to breed yourself. The second thing is that uh, if you can't adopt a pet and provide an appropriate home for it, and there are situations where you can't, you may live where there's no pets allowed or the restrictions may be uh, there. The second thing you can do is you can foster an animal if they allow to, you to foster kittens or uh, foster young dogs because they're orphans and they need 24-hour care if they're going to grow up. And so another thing is educating other people and volunteering. Uh, everyone wants a volunteer, but there's a lot of satisfaction in volunteering at an animal shelter. You don't have to walk the dogs necessarily. You could walk, work in the office. Uh, you don't have to clean the cages necessarily, but you are with living creatures, and it makes you feel important to that volunteer position. And the other thing is donate. Find out which agencies are doing the best job, and uh, then donate not only your services, but some financial uh, money to them as well. Well, Dorothy, our time is up. And thanks for effectively covering the subject for us on, on two different shows. Oh, well, thank you very much. And I'd really like to thank all the people that helped me do the research. Uh, there are numbers of them, dozens of them, that have helped me individually and from other agencies. Well, you've and, just done it. All right. So, I hope, I thank hope you. You're and welcome. Thanks for watching this edition of The Voice of Oceanside, Passion for Pets. Remember, there's another edition of The Voice on this same topic. And both of those and any other Voice of Oceanside is available for viewing at koct.org. Thanks for being with us.